<laughs> okay, Harold, start this conversation and start off by telling us that title again and what we're this Okay. Is. Not only are fo is the fossil column false, but hominids are a hoax. Is there anything to believe in? Everything seems to be, seems to be a hoax, seems to be false. Have we got any positive stuff on this show? Do you want me to try and defend <laughs> evolution when I don't believe in it, Brad? <laughs> yeah, you could, you could invent all kinds of stuff. And that's exactly what Dr. Patterson was talking about. He says, look, okay, if I were to get artists to draw pictures and that has been done and this relates to hominids being a hoax you know because uh, for instance I think last time I mentioned that in the monkey trial in Dayton Tennessee in 1925 when Scopes the teacher was accused of teaching evolution in the classroom in, in Dayton Tennessee which actually was a lie he probably didn't do that at all but anyway the 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 uh, Civil Liberties Association got him to agree that he would stand trial for this because they wanted to make an issue out of the creation evolution thing in the classroom. And uh, the, when uh, uh, he was uh, tried, uh, one of the greatest evidences that Clarence Darrow, the atheist lawyer, brilliant lawyer, uh, brought against uh, William Jennings Bryant, the Bible-believing chap who almost became president of the United States three times, uh, was a tooth, the evidence of a tooth. It was Nebraska man, they called. This tooth came from a hominid, half monkey, half man, from a pithecanthropos. Pithecos in Greek is a monkey or an ape, and anthropos, anthropology, is a man. So um, they the Clarence Darrell brought out this this tooth and the scientist said this tooth belonged to a hominid a half monkey half man an ape man and uh, that had great weight he was very persuasive in persuading the, the uh, radio audience that listened all over the world to this trial that here was evidence of a half man half ape uh, transitional form between ape and man uh, and of course obviously Dr. Patterson doesn't agree with this because he says he, can't, he hasn't got one watertight example of a transitional form but this was a transitional form well uh, years later they found that this tooth comes from a, uh, an animal a pig-like animal a, a pickery that is still uh, extent still living down in the Amazon Valley and, and other places in the world so it was a hoax it was a hoax but you know uh, Dr. Paris says look I could probably get artists to draw pictures and this is what they did for this Nebraska man they found this tooth in Nebraska uh, and so called Nebraska man and the the uh, they got artists to draw up uh, what this man looked like if you can imagine trying to draw what a man looks like from a, or a half man, a from hominid, a tooth. from a tooth, eh? <laughs> but they drew up this Nebraska man and then they drew up a nice wife for him and they drew up a, a prehistoric jungle scene for them to live in and oh, you know, same thing we see in the Royal Ontario Museum which is paid for by our money, all these trees that Dr. Paz is talking about with the ancestral forms of horses, a lot of baloney, the whole thing. <laughs> fabricated and uh, so yeah the, the, the hominids are hoax everywhere you you look at the evidence for ape man for uh, monkeys or apes developing into men uh, where they're supposed to be transitional forms between monkeys or apes and men you've got a hoax we mentioned last time the uh, Piltdown man when I was university that was exploded. Uh, I think it was basically uh, developed about in the early 1930s and exploded when I was at university in the 1950s where the, uh, some students of Professor Dawson in the Piltdown area of England uh, got this uh, skull and they uh, treated it with acid and they filed the teeth and that kind of thing and made it look like uh, so it had come uh, from an, an ape uh, and so it was a hominid or pithecanthropos and for about 20 years it was held to be evidence that apes had turned into man and then you've got other examples where you've got uh, oh I, 
mentioned last time, the Java man, Dr. Eugene Dubois. He was uh, hired by the uh, Dutch government, even though he was French, his name Dubois shows you that, and uh, he was hired by the Dutch government to research in the area of Java, and he came up with some bones, femur, I think, from uh, uh, some creature, and some parts of skull, and of course teeth again, they love teeth. <laughs> and they, they, he took these bones and he made plaster casts of them and sent them all over the world to prove that this was a half monkey, half man. That was in 1893. He was running out of money for his research, and uh, suddenly he found this, of course, and then the money started to flow in, because here was, here was fantastic evidence of monkeys turning into men, a real hominid, a real pithic anthropist. And, uh, uh, and uh, so from 1893 to about 1932 or three, uh, when he was on his deathbed, he admitted that what people had questioned, both creationists and evolutionists had questioned, that these were, uh, bones and pieces of skull and so on didn't come from the same creature, he admitted. One came from a gibbon, a kind of monkey, and mm -hmm. others came from men. They uh, used to uh, kill monkeys and eat their brains in this, with, uh, by thousands mm -hmm. of pits of them uh, there in that area, apparently. So, you, you know, you, you can fill in the, the bones with plaster Paris, and you can draw paintings of them, and you can, you can create uh, backgrounds for them, prehistoric backgrounds, and make it all look so wonderful. But it's a hoax. Hominids are a hoax. So, and of course you can understand why they concentrate on this type of transitional form, because that's a key one. What was the, the species that transmuted, evolved from one species to another to become man? If, if man is not a special creation of God, into a man breathed into which God breathed the breath of life and man became a living soul, created in the image and likeness of God, then of course you can have anything. Man doesn't, he's just an accident. He's just a chance. So all these teachings uh, that have taught, even when I went to school, are all a hoax about evolution and man coming uh, from the sea, evolving into an ape, evolving into prehistoric man, evolving into what we have today. It's all a hoax. Yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a wonderful hypothesis. I mean, it's a, a tremendous intellectual exercise and theory. But interesting, you know, uh, we should mention uh, some of our, uh, our creationist people in Britain, when I was involved with uh, creation science in, in Ontario years ago, uh, they were on a radio broadcast with uh, Professor Dawkins, the man who has challenged uh, Christianity and written the book, uh, famous book, The God Delusion, you know, it's a delusion to believe in God and, and supported evolution, it's the answer. Uh, and on that radio broadcast, I think, believe it was on BBC, uh, they asked uh, Professor Dawkins, they said, uh, uh, Professor Dawkins, uh, just how does this evolutionary process work? And he said, well, really, it's just the way Darwin said, it's through a process of natural selection and through favorable mutations. And of course what he meant by that was favorable mutations in, within a species that gradually caused it to transmute, to, from a mutation to a transmutation, from one species to another, a snake to a bird or whatever you got. And uh, so they said, oh that's very interesting, uh, Professor Dawkins, could you uh, give us an example of a favorable mutation? Do you know he couldn't give them one? Wouldn't give them one. Now I know that there are favorable mutations within species. For instance, you have examples of beetles that uh, their lives are preserved and their species preserved on islands because they lose their wings and then they're not blown off the island and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And you get different kinds of eyes and you have, you've got the beaks that uh, uh, Darwin discovered different kinds of beaks adapted to their environment and food sources and so on. Chameleons. The Galapagos mm -hmm. Islands, yes, and that kind of thing. But, um, and another amazing thing, uh, Professor Dawkins was... Uh, so you're talking about like evolution within a species 
Yes. You find examples of that. That's not, mutation. But not between a species. No, from one species to another. Not transmutation from one species to another, but what, there's all kinds of adaption within, within species. Within species. Yeah. Let's say, you know, we see dogs that are almost the size of mice and see them some almost the size of horses and very different features. But they're still dogs. Mm -hmm. Because the Bible says, and I think this is a point we made last time when we were finishing up, the Bible says that God made every creature according to its kind, according to its min, M-I-N, basically, in uh, Genesis. Uh, we read that, and you can't cross those barriers, and there's no evidence that, that they've ever been crossed. Uh, lots of imagination, but no, no evidence. Uh, the, the other uh, rather interesting interview with Dawkins, uh, Ben Stein was asked uh, asked him. Mm -hmm. Pardon? Ben Stein asked Ben Stein asked Professor Dawkins. Thank you, right? Yeah. And it's in that movie uh, that's on the shelf here, Expelled. No Intelligence Allowed is the subtitle of it. Expelled, where uh, Stein gets expelled from the scientific community, and as professors do, if they say they believe in intelligent design. You just mentioned intelligent design, and boy, you're out of the university like lightning. Or if you're in the scientific community, they don't want to have anything to do with you. We don't want the idea of intelligent design. So Ben Stein pressed Dawkins in this interview as recorded in the movie Expelled, No Intelligence Allowed. He said, Professor Dawkins, just how would such an extremely complex thing as a living cell come into existence, according to your, idea, your view? And... Uh, Dawkins hedged and hummed and hawed and hawed and hummed and hedged. And finally, as Stein pressed him, he said, well, perhaps some uh, more advanced type of life on a distant planet could have created a living cell. Well, that's intelligent design. It's just taking it back one step, you see, from our present solar system or whatever. But it's still intelligent design. And that's what they're firing professors and scientists for. You can't have an intelligent creator that actually created these things. The, the there was a real that. stir among the atheist community, and it was they were saying that he got tricked into saying that, yeah. that he said something he didn't mean, and yeah. he was uh, trying to recant what he'd said because of the pressure of the interview. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he, did, he didn't say what what in, intelligent design from what planet. He said yeah. other planet, but what planet? Yeah, you know, and but how does that help us? Then that means how did that intelligence evolve on that planet before? Exactly. The, you know, there still is a designer somewhere that's creating this intelligence that, in turn, it you know. Mm -hmm. This is just it's an ET endless, all over again, ET, extraterrestrial. Exactly. You see, exactly. But the, the the interesting thing is that this is an old drummed up evolutionary theory from way back, and you know, from everywhere. It's called panspermia. That is that there, there's life all through the universe, and of course you know they've got these uh, telescopic radio you know, things mm -hmm. set up to try and find out if there's intelligence, if any response of intelligence from outer space. But the, the panspermia evolutionary theory is that, uh, that life on Earth came because there's life pan, it's pan, it's all over the universe, and, and some of the seeds of it came to Earth somehow. Well, that's really what Dawkins is saying there. It came from outer space. But it's still an intelligent creature, mm -hmm. if that's true. If, if his idea was true, it's intelligent design, and that's what they're firing professors and scientists for all over the world. Mm. So it's wild. So that's uh, sort of hominids or hoax. Now, the last one that we want to deal with, do we want to deal with it well, now? Or? Let's take another break. Okay. And let's come back to talk about the third one and tell us what that is, Carl. The third one is radiometrics are riddled. I can say that. Radiometrics are riddled. You got that right. See, I got I walked your lips that time. That really professional. <laughs> now, we, we won't have this available uh, this time, but we have a booklet called uh, Sci e Evolution Science Falsely So-Called. Um, we had a hard drive mishap, so we, it's going, we're not going to this week have that book available for download. 
but keep watching the website, come back to these videos, and at some point we're going to also include a link for that book as a free download once we recover that file. I'd like to say one more thing. Your questions and comments are always welcome on truthiswhatmatters.com and just fill out the box on the bottom of the website for yep. a reply. Yep, for a comment. For a comment and we'll get them on the next edition of truthiswhatmatters.com. Yes, we'd like to get to know our viewers and at some point we'd like to open up a BBS area where we can all get together and discuss things and possibly later start up a call-in opportunity on the show.